Good morning, and welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. I am Adam. So, it's been a very slow few news weeks, um, and I don't think that a trailer for Clerks 3 is going to be enough to do an entire podcast about tonight. Um, I know that's dropping today. Um, I, I just, there's, there's, there's been too much going on. Um, but, I did watch a movie and play a video game yesterday, so we'll talk about those today, uh, over the course of this half hour. Um, but first, I talked about a little bit on, on Beware of Spoilers, how we have the short film that is now, the script is done after a Zoom call with my editor yesterday, not for the, for the script, but for my work at Smithtown Chronicle, we had a staff meeting on Zoom, I drew a very nice smiley face on it, um, while I was sitting in my car on that call, um, and, um, I still have the script here next to me, I'm still going through it, still feel like it needs cuts, but I'm not quite sure where to make the cuts, um, and it's a recurring problem, um, because it's like, if we're gonna cut something, we'd be cutting basically. It's a seven right now. It's 17 minutes, and I, I know that that's short, even for a short. But I've seen some uh, people speaking on the matter say that the shorts have the best likelihood of getting uh, slotted in film festivals are 10 minutes or less. So if I'm gonna do that, I gotta cut about seven minutes from this. And if we cut after shooting. That means we're shortchanging someone who already had a performance. Like, the actor has shown... And this is the thing is, too. This already is truncated. Because this is a, uh, a piece from a much larger anthology. And I'm like, well, I'll just take this part out. Cut it down. Fit it in here. And then we'll go from there. And... I, I'm, I'm looking at, you know this, and the the issue becomes it has to be cut before we get the scripts out to prospective actors and actresses. Um, there has to be cut. And, and, and maybe it comes down to just cutting a character entirely, and I have a feeling I know which one I would cut, because I think that that would be the easiest way to, to go, um, because I don't want to just have someone there as window dressing, um, but you gotta do what you gotta do, um, so I'm, I'm, I've been looking at that, then the issue comes funding the project, and I considered crowdfunding through, like, um, uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter or something similar, um, but I, I think that just selling the, selling stuff and using the money that comes from that is the best way forward, uh, in terms of crowdfunding. I don't think that crowdfunding via, um, like a crowdfunding app, I, I, I'm not... There's a lot of extra research that goes into that to the point where I probably need a producer who just handles the crowdfunding aspects. Um, I don't think that would be a great idea for this project. Um, beep, beep, beep. Yep, there we go. Um, I don't think that would be a great option for this project. Um, I think that if I were to sell copies of the books that have been released, that would be the best way forward for funding this project. And then once we get this project funded and then we can use, you know, the money from that to fund other projects, I think that the next lowest budget thing that is done, um, and, and can be shot reasonably soon would be probably Sizzle Reel. I have another one that's kind of a work in progress um, that's more, you know, retail-centric. Um, 
that would be probably the cheapest, but the script's still in an early stage. I don't want to, um, I don't want to jump right into that. Um, I think Sizzle Reel will probably be the next cheapest, because it's a low-budget horror. And we could probably shoot that on the cheap, um, if we're going to do a feature next. Um, but that script will be out for people to buy if they want to read it this coming, uh, August. I'm releasing it. That's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, like, at this point, entering them in contests and entering them in, in all of these other things, it ends up being a waste of time and a waste of money, because then you gotta sit there and hope you win, and if you don't win, then it's just, you know, all of that. I'd rather just give it to the fans, and give it to people who like it, because that's who, you know, that's who like it. Um, and then, you know, if the fans want to see it in live action, and then we can make that happen with, you know, proper funding if we figure out how to, uh, how to actually fund it. Um, uh, but what we're looking at right now is um, the goal for the short is something like... The short itself is 150, I think, um, per actor for four actors, and then whatever the rental cost is of, like, a VFW hall or a, um, or like a church basement. I gotta look into that a little bit more. Um, but, you know, that is that aspect of it. There are other incidentals that go into what we're looking for to complete the project, but that's not budgeted for this film, because those will be used for other projects after. Um, it won't just be this short, it will be, you know, if we make Sizzle Reel, if we make the the retail movie, if we make, you know, in the end, it's not a expensive movie, um, comparatively speaking, compared to, like, the, uh, you know, Swan Song, and then, you know, Echo Alpha, and well, Echo Delta is getting into really expensive territory, uh, when we get into high fantasy aspects, and, and you know, stuff like that. Um, but, or even, like, The Temple Outside of Time, which is space-faring science fiction, which I know with green screens being what they are, it's not as expensive, but still expensive. And if the short film does well, and we get enough money from the short film, we can always do that as, um, as a feature-length version of the anthology, which was also planned. It's, it's, like, the short film is, I think I've talked about the idea before on here. This was, uh, me and Josie were working on it a little bit, uh, so a lot of the characters that Josie helped develop, um, prelude was the idea, where it's the day before, it's a bunch of superheroes, but it's the day before a big crisis style event, like one of those earth multiverse shattering events that's going to unite all the heroes together, and it's basically the day before an Avengers movie, it, it, it's basically what it is, and you have all these heroes who are living their lives, so... One of the things that's in this, the first, you know, what's it called, the first real, you know, one that's easiest to develop as a short on its own is going to be um, like a support group. And a lot of the characters you've met before, there's no, there really no surprises here in terms of who's going to be in this, considering you've, you know, you, you probably are familiar with some of my work in the past, like... The, the, the lead in this is going to be Victoria, who was the lead all through Swan Song and Duet and The Muses, and she's the lead in this. Um, she's leading a support group for people who got powers and are now dealing with the fallout of these powers on their life, and, and what does that mean for their daily life, and all of that. So, uh, rounding out the cast of Scott, um, Scott Sheridan, who you know, who has the force fields and all of that, um, there is, um, Candace, who is a lot to work with, the actress who plays Candace is going to have a lot to work with in this, um, similarly with some, with some things to work with, but not, not as much, is, um, what's her name, uh, Helen, Helen's going to have a little bit there, um, and then new character who is, you know, really there for this to kind of help exposit everything. Um, J uh, Joseph Walker, 
who was a character that me and Josie came up with years ago, um, but we never really had a use for because it was part of a, like, um, what's it called? It was part of a, like, uh, a thing about, you know, people with weird powers who have to come together and, um, like, you know, figure out how to use their powers in a more positive way. Um, and we never really found a use for these ideas. We kind of just pushed them, you know, kind of just pushed them aside to an extent. Um, and, and decided to move along. But it's, it's just one of those things that we're, we're, it's like nothing is ever really just, you know, dead. It's, it's all, you know, it just because it didn't get used when it was intended to be used doesn't mean that it's never useful and then we're going to use it now. Um, so, that is the, the big, uh, the big thing we're working on. Um, and I think what we're going to do to fund it is we're going to set up a website, um, and through the website we will be shipping out, um, editions of past books, new editions of past books, hard and soft cover, um, these editions will all come with a, um, what's it called, will all come with the script at the end for Prelude Part 1 Support Group, um, and all the proceeds from that will go to, um, developing, hiring actors, location, uh, editing, all that cool stuff. Um, see, I kind of want to do a, like, a public, like, you know, thing that shows how much money we've raised, um, where people can see it, and it's, like, percent to goal, uh, and I think that this is part of why I'm against using Kickstarter, is that I don't want to have that up and then not have it work. Like, it, like, as it stands, if this fails, it's like, all right, whatever. No one knows but really me and anyone who listens to that. It's like, okay, well, just, it goes on the long list of things that I started and never finished. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's fine. But I, I think putting it up there and being like, here's where we are. Here's percent to goal. Um, I, I feel like that, that gives it a, a sense of like, Oh, we can see just how little people give a fuck about this, um, if we do that. Um, but here we are, and we're going to be, you know, setting up that site within the next few days. Uh, I'm going to be ordering the first batch of books that are going to be going out, um, probably this Friday. Uh, I'll order 50 of them. It'll be cheaper than through Amazon. That's the big thing is that it is always going to be cheaper than through Amazon to order it this way. And I'll also sign the books. Um, that's the other thing. Is I, will, I will also sign the books. Worst case scenario, I buy these books and they don't sell. I'll donate them to a library or something or a thrift store or something. So, you know, they'll still be in circulation. Um, so it's not a complete, like, yeah, it's a loss of money. But at the end of the day, it, it'll, I gotta pay Amazon to print the book, uh, and then I'll get a bunch of them, um, but then once I pay Amazon to print the book, when I sell the book, I will recoup the cost, you know, personally on the back end, and then the rest of the money, whatever profit, will go directly into, um, doing that. Gotta work out shipping details, I gotta work out all of that kind of stuff, um, and then that will hopefully, if I can figure out Shopify a little bit better, that will all be incorporated directly into the price. Um, and we'll have another blurb before an episode where we discuss how that's working. So I think this is a better way to do it. I think this is a, a kind of transparent way of being like, this is what your money is going to if you make this, you know, this happen. 
this this is where this is happening. Um, and, and it is one of the and the thing is too, it's like as always, money from the podcast, money from buying the books on Amazon, money from you know anything else has always gone towards these projects and um, I think that if we look at, you know, how we've done so far, I think we've done pretty good, all things considered. Um, I, I think that, uh, like, the podcast is kind of breaking even, and I think redirecting that money, and that's the thing, too, if you can get people to listen to the podcast, that would help, too. Um, because then we would be getting more income from ad revenue if more people were listening. Uh, so tell your friends, give us a five-star rating, you know, all that good stuff, and then we'll be able to. The more we get done, the more we can, you know, help. And the books won't be inhibitively expensive either. I'm not going to be someone who's going to charge, like, 80 bucks or, like, 30 bucks for a hardcover book. And that, that'd be ridiculous. Um, and there will be pictures of the books on, on the Shopify store once we set it up and all of that, and it will be linked through the main site, which is still kind of a clusterfuck, but I have very little time to actually work on this stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, we have a lot going on. The more you help out, the more cool stuff we can put out. Um, and, and that's always been the way it is. Uh, so, you know, next week is uh, Long Island International Film Expo. Um, we are going, I'm going to be going. We're going to be covering some movies out of there. Um, then Stony Brook Film Festival is also this month. Uh, next month is Long Island Retro Gaming Expo I'm going to be going to. We're going to be talking to people there, hopefully. We're going to be talking to people at uh, Long Island Tropic Con, hopefully, hopefully next month. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll and New York Comic Con. Will also be coming up, and we have a ton of ton of cool content coming um, just on that front alone. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I mean, I guess it may be a slow news week, but you know, I brought news. Um, but yeah, prelude part one support group, and really technically in the script it's part four. But we're going to call it part one because it's the first one we're releasing. Um, Because the other parts of it are a little bit more expensive. This is the cheapest aspect of it. This is, you know, the cheapest part. This is, uh, because it's like, the other one is uh, a visitation room in a jail. There's one in a, um, like, a 90s style mall, which will require a lot of VFX work um, and and production design. there is a, uh, and then what else was there? There is one that takes place in two different settings, one in a lab, and then half in a lab, and then half in an alley, although that scene did appear in a book already, um, in, um, well, part of the scene, uh, not the whole scene, um, part of the scene appeared in, in the, uh, in, uh, our past is not to find us, which the sequel is coming out next May. I, uh, I, I put that on the website, and there is going to be a sequel to Our Past is Not to Find Us. Uh, finally going to get around to doing that. I really like writing that story. Uh, I think I've told it before. It started out as, like, a rogue spec, stri- spec script, and then it kind of, I like, why am I, why am I going to bother making a spec script that, you know, no one's ever going to read or care about it. DC, why don't I just make a, uh, what's it called? Why don't I just make a, uh, an independent thing? And, you know, that's another one that could be, but it's visual effects heavy again, and that will cost money. Um, but I think as of right now, the plan is prelude, um, part one. Then if that gets funded and we can get funding for the full movie, uh, we'll do prelude as a feature length um, with all the parts. Then we'll do um, uh, sizzle reel, and then we'll do um, and then we'll do in the end because you could probably shoot that entirely in upstate New York pretty easily. 
was very little. I mean, you could probably even sub in parts of, like, Albany or Rochester for New York City. And, uh, Sacramento. Anyway, we'll wrap up there for today. This, uh, we'll talk about the video games and, and all of that at a later date. Uh, I also have a bagged episode that I haven't put up yet. Um, that I recorded, like, a week and a half ago at this point and just haven't uploaded. Uh, about Lilo and Stitch. But, until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.